Uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a video on the subject of ectopic heartbeats which happen after people have gone through an ablation for atrial fibrillation. Um, one of the commonest questions I get asked uh, by a lot of people who have gone through an ablation uh, say, well, they say, look, you know, I um, have had an ablation, I've not had much in the way of AFib anymore, but I'm getting these terrible ectopics and I never used to get them beforehand. Or well, what's going on? Why am I getting this? And I said, and, and I used to say to them that, look, you know, one of the reasons is that um, when you've gone through an ablation, um, you're always a little bit more hyper aroused to your heart. And because you're hyper aroused, you're looking out. And because of that, you will notice ectopics and, you know, you'll, that'll cause you concern because you'll be worried that the AF will come back, the AFib will come back, and that will trigger more ectopics. However, I was really keen to look into this and try and work out why um, so many people that I speak to seem to have more ectopics after going through an ablation. And there was a really interesting paper I found, which was published in uh, a journal called Medicine in 2016 in September. And the lead author is Wu, W-E, sorry, W-U et al. Okay. Uh, and basically what these guys looked at was uh, 1,453 patients who underwent ablation for atrial fibrillation. Now, none of them, um, these guys basically did, they, they did a monitor, a 24-hour monitor a month before um, these people had their ablation. And then they did a monitor a month, uh, three months, six months after the ablation. And basically what they found was that uh, they looked at, I think, uh, 1,453 patients of these 1,053 patients were actually studied because they met the inclusion exclusion criteria and uh, none of them had a uh, significant number of ectopics before the ablation on the monitor that they had done within a month before the ablation. Now by significant I mean over a thousand in a 24 hour um, period. So none of these guys had more than a thousand ectopics on a monitor done before the ablation. After the ablation, they found that 46 out of the 1,053 patients, which is 4.4% of patients, had evidence of significant ectopics or even non-sustained VT on their monitor, i.e. more than 1,000. So before uh, the ablation, uh, they didn't have as many ectopics, certainly not uh, uh, more than 1,000. After the uh, ablation, 4.4% uh, had more than a thousand ectopics uh, over a 24-hour period. Of these, 31, so 67% of these patients were actually asymptomatic. They weren't. They didn't know they were getting all these ectopics, um, but the rest uh, ha had palpitations and a sensation of f fullness in the stomach. Okay. When you look at the number of ectopics, the median number of ectopics was 3,161. So quite a lot of ectopics happening after uh, an ablation. Uh, however, one person actually had 27,407 ectopics on a 24-hour ECG after the ablation. Six patients had over 10,000 ectopics in a 24-hour period, and 14 patients had over 5,000 ectopics. Um, in um, the 24-hour period. And there appeared to be a, um, a, a distribution of these ectopics. So they used to happen more so during the day rather than at night. And there used to be more ectopics happening uh, between 6 and 12 in the morning and between uh, 3 and 9 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, in six patients, the ectopics disappeared over a period of time without any treatment at all. Um, at, so in general, there were about 3,100 ectopics soon after the ablation. And when you continue to follow these patients up, the number of ectopics got less with time. So from um, that, they well, fell to about 2,900 ectopics at about three months uh, or so. 
What is really interesting is that they wanted to try and work out whether they, what the mechanism behind these ectopics was. And they looked at the leukocyte count, which is the white cell count. White cells go up in inflammation. And they found that people who had an elevated white cell count after the ablation were more likely to have these ectopics. So it does appear that there may be localized inflammation happening around the heart uh, from the ablation which causes these ectopics. The great news is that none of these ectopics uh, caused any harm to the patient. So yes, there were more ectopics, uh, but it doesn't appear that they've caused any of those patients any harm whatsoever. So it is an inconvenience and certainly they do occur. Um, what is the relevance of this? Well, to my mind, I say to a lot of my patients, I said, you know, if you're getting a lot of AFib and uh, it bothers you a lot and it, and you want a better quality of life, then it's not an unreasonable thing to consider an ablation. Um, but you must be mentally right. You know, if you are someone who gets very, very anxious, who gets ectopics because of anxiety, etc., after the ablation, you'll probably notice all these ectopics a lot more. So it's really important to understand why you're having the ablation. You're having the ablation for the AFib. It's very important to get anxiety, etc., addressed before the ablation, uh, because otherwise what can happen is if you are more anxious, you're going to be on the lookout and you're going to be having more ectopics. Well, some people are going to be having more ectopics anyway as a result of the inflammation stimulated by the by the ablation, and then they're going to notice them and then the anxiety will get worse, etc, etc. So I hope this is useful and hope uh, it gives you um, an understanding of why people get uh, ectopics after an ablation and we think it's a localized inflammatory effect but i'm sure that there's also a component of people feeling hyper aroused as well um, they're not dangerous and they do seem to get better with time okay um, now thank you so much for all the great feedback thank you for watching my channel i'm going to try and improve the video quality i'm trying to do this on a new camera so if you like it uh, please let me know if you have any comments i would love to hear from you um, what else have we doing? We're starting a new website, drsanjayguptacardiologist.com. I would love to hear patient stories. Um, I'm going to start up a WhatsApp broadcast uh, so that I can put smaller videos and if people want to download them, they can download them on their phones, etc. Um, uh, and we're on Instagram. Well, I'm on Instagram. I say we because um, Bluebell Gupta, my partner in crime, is, um, is part of it all. Uh, and uh, if you get if you are on Instagram, please consider uh, sharing and consider uh, following uh, the page. It's called Your Cardiology. Thank you so much and all the best and have a great night.